This is a talk about the JIT. This is not a complete introduction about PyPy. I'm giving a second talk at 5 p.m., I think. Yeah. And it will be a full introduction. So for beginners, it's probably good to, to go there. So yes, that's me. You can find me on Twitter there. Um, so yes, I work on NumPyPy, thanks to donations from people like you. So thank you. Um, yes, I want to make this as interactive as possible. I don't want to lose anyone, so please interrupt me and ask questions. Uh, even if we diverge completely from the slides, of I don't care. Um, this is roughly how the JIT works. Well, more or less. And uh, you can close your eyes. At some point, there's some machine code, but you, if you get scared, you can close your eyes. So yes, PyPy, um, it's pretty fast. Um, this is taken from a while, like si since uh, six months ago. And um, so yes, on that's our benchmarks that we run every night. And you can see that on some benchmarks, we are quite faster. And that's real world example. That's not one benchmark with one function. I mean, that's real world, e real world example. Like for example, the Django one is the Django templating. It's a Django templating benchmark. So yes. So first, let's talk about compilers. Like, so ahead of time, compilers are compiler that needs to know everything, like before running your program. So it's good for languages like C because well, in C it's easy. You know every type. Well, you know everything, more or less. But, well, it's bad for Python because in Python you, you don't know anything. You, go, you don't know any, any types. You don't know, you don't know even if a variable exists or not at statically. So yes, that's why you have interpreters. Um, so that's the, uh, C Python is 100% uh, an interpreter. Um, so that's what, you, that's what you use when you type Python. And um, it compiles to some high level instruction that are all done every single time during runtime. And while well, it's pretty dumb, um, for example, every time you see an, an attribute access, every time you try to do, to do um, attribute resolution, like method, method resolution, um, if you see one million times uh, two integers being added, then it will still try. Is it an integer? Is it not? Uh, so yes, it's, it's pretty dumb. So that's why you have JIT. Uh, JIT stands for Just-In-Time Compiler. So that's used by PyPy, but also with on JavaScript by V8, uh, well, um, the JVM, uh, well, lots of runtimes. And it gathers information that run runtime, like for example, how many times the, this code runs, uh, uh, well, the types that we see, and it's used to produce efficient machine code. So yes, let's talk a bit about R Python. It's the language in which PyPy is written. It's a statically typed subset, so it it looks like Python, but it doesn't really taste like Python. And the big advantage of R Python is that you write your interpreter in R Python and the JIT, you get it for free. Like you can write an, a Ruby virtual machine that exists, it's called Topaz. You just write an interpreter and you get the same JIT as PyPy. And well, you get all the benefits that, well, all the things that we did uh, during 10 years and you get it for Ruby. And yes, you, you need to just add one line plus some annotations like this is constant, this is mostly constant, that sort of things. <coughs> so yes, you have two types of JITs, well, two main types, method JITs and tracing JITs. So I'm going to talk about tracing JITs, which is the, um, the technique that PyPy uses. So it's mainly based uh, on loops. So you record, you record the loop. Well, you record each time you, you um, every, 
well, how many times you execute a loop. And after some iteration on PyPy, it's 1039, then you start tracing. And you, st you start tracing your entire program until you reach the top of the loop. And so yes, you you really trace everything. So if if you have a function call, you go inside it, and if you have an if, then it's at runtime. So you trace only one branch, one branch of the if. And well, yes, it inlines almost everything. But things like well, R Python function that contains loops, for example, are not are not inline because well, it can explode, and and we don't want that. And so it then, then you have a linear trace, and you send it to the optimizer, and then it's compiled, and it's used the next time you, the next time you, you run your loop. So yes, the problem is that with guards, well, the problem is with, with the trace, it's linear. But I mean, if you, you don't have the same input every single time, so one day. One day you have well, that's why you have ifs. You want to you want two paths of the ifs. So if you find a value that well, if you reach a value that is not um, for yes, for example, if you have if a is true, and then you find when you trace it, you f a is really true, then you trace this. But if it's not, then it's not in the trace. So you need a way of saying if. If the assumption that I made is, is not true, then come back to the interpreter. Except after after some times you you trace again from the guard up until you reach back to the well. That's my next slide. Yes. Um, so you re you trace the m the second path and you attach it back to the trace. Yeah, so an example of optimizations, um, virtuals are basically, well, in Python, integers are objects, and objects are, well, you need to allocate them, you need, you need, to, you need to do tons of stuff. So, um, except that you don't choose it mostly. I mean, we don't really call attribute, you don't really call methods on integer objects, um, well, sometimes you do, but mostly you don't. That's why that's why we still need to implement it. But we you, we don't want to pay the cost. And um, virtualizable are the same thing, but for frames, um, like PDB can be implemented because you have frame introspection. And while PDB is great, but at the same time, when you, you when you don't use PDB, you still pay the cost of having having introspection. And in the JIT, you don't have to pay that cost. And um, you have also promotion. So you say this, this um, specialized trace on this value. For example, it's used, for example, to say um, consider that well, consider that the type never change in the trace. And so, if the type change, then you can uh, you can come back to the interpreter. So yes, I'm going to do a demo about JIT Viewer. It's the tool that we use to to look at traces. Um, yes. So this is an example of pro of program. That's run by the by the JIT. Well, that's run by PyPy. You run it, and then you have some. Uh, can you see it? No. no. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, 
Yes. Can you see this? <laughs> yes. Well, I will. So I look at the double loop function. Um, so it has yes a double loop basically, and um, so we want. So yes. So we can look at the tray that generated. So you have all the other functions in the file, but you can look at the top two functions, and so you can see that. Um, so this exe is executed a lot, and you can see the, so the, the trace. Oops. Yes, the trace here. So you can see in blue, you can see the code that's executed. <coughs> so you can <coughs> compare it to. Um, nope. Yes, to this. So it's this that that's executed. So you can see this statement here and this statement here. OK. Um, then you can see the bytecode at in the block at uh, with no indentation. So that's the Python bytecode. And then uh, with the level and of indentation, it's an abstract representation of the, of the tray that called resops. And so it's basically a high-level assembler. And so you can see that um, you can see load fast, um, those three load fast instructions. Um, they don't generate any, any code. So, so you can see that's pretty efficient. I mean, you have, you have an operation in, in Python. Well, that's do something like, well, you don't pay, re you don't re pay the cost at all of looking up um, a variable. And yes, so you can see add, adding is int add and um, and yes, well the store, yes, you don't pay the, s the cost of the store at all and um, and then you jump back. Um, so and yes, if you want to see the mach machine code and this is the machine code. So yes, that's pretty well, if you compare it to the number of ex instructions you, you execute when you run, um, when you run in an interpreter, uh, there's, no the, there's a huge difference. So, uh, yes, and now I'm going to run um, an an, um, a real-time edge detection algorithm on PyPy and on CPython, and we are going to see the difference. So you can see that's in real time. Uh, I mean, well, 22, 22 FPS, well, which is well, close to well, it's real time. And so you can try on C Python. <laughs> yes, no, I think the first three averages are not really averages, but. So yes, and it's with the with this tracing and all this optimization that we can run that fast because well we we remove the cost of of a lot of things that well that cost a lot of, a lot on C Python and don't on PyPy. And so if you yes you even you well yes it's even hard to kill. And if you want to look, um, it's a video. Uh, I think I have it there. It's really the same thing? <laughs> yes. Well, it's the s same thing, yeah. but with, yes, it's a video, except that you can see uh, 
well, 209 FPS. Uh, so that's easier to benchmark than real-time video because, well, you can go much faster. Why yes? is it so much faster on the video than on TV? Is it because it's not doing the I.O. or because it can do I.O. bufferedly? Or? No, because the webcam is too slow. Ah, because, okay, so the limit is the 30 FPS that you're getting from the webcam? Yes. Okay. So, yes, okay. So, yes, that's PyPy and on C Python. Well, it's, it's mostly the same as, well, it's, it's a bit faster, but <laughs> yes, it's still some FPS. It also has less resolution than the video, right? Yes. Uh, kill. Um, so, Yes, that's perhaps thank you for listening and well do you have questions? Well, we don't want to say, well, we want to optimize your code. Like, if it looks Pythonic, Python should, should optimize it. And if it's not, then, well, it's our problem. So if something is slow, then, well, send it to us and we'll try to fix it. Sure, but are there any areas where you know that that's the current state? Of this well, f like, pff, I think dispatch loops, for example, if you have a dispatch loop, uh, well, it's kind of hard to trace. Uh, for example. Um, well, it's hard because you have to re-implement tons of things. Um, and, uh, well, it's progressing. I mean, it's I mean, it's a bit of boring progress. It's just, well, we support more things. Uh, so that's the support right now. We m we're, I think we're going to shift uh, in, we're going to shift our focus from compatibility a bit to performance. And we'll try to really, really boost the performance. Yes. An add-on to, add to this question uh, about NumPy. Uh, in PyPy wide 1.9, there was this perfect feature of lazy evaluation. Yes. Delayed evaluation. Any chances of getting it back? Yes. Well, it, well, when it, well, it will be back when, when, well, well, it will be back. <laughs> <laughs> Someday. Um, I was wondering about the extension support. I knew that is, it was problematic uh, the last time that I, or not supported even. I was wondering if there was any change or any updates on this. Um, yes, C extensions are a big issue um, still. Uh, there's a compatibility layer, but it's not that great. It doesn't support everything and it's slow. So, um, yeah. well, yes, well, if you're interacting with C code, C code, then yes, you should use CFFI. But if you're like, if the thing you're writing, like for example for NumPy, I mean, it's not really interacting with the C library. So, yes, that's the kind of thing that where we that are problematic. But yes, if you're really only talking to a C library, then yes, you should use CFFI. Uh, how bad is the overhead for running JPUer? Can you do that like on production requests, or is it going to completely destroy case performance? Um, no, I think well, I think it's. No, I, I'm not sure, but I think it's pretty long. <laughs> it's already logged and, well, it's just not printed. I mean, the trace, you already have the trace. Uh, I mean, you, you, just, you just print the stuff that, that <laughs> is sent to the backend. I mean, there's not really processing, it's just visualization. And Finished. Okay. Yeah. Thank you.